so let's look at a more efficient uh, way to uh, do dynamic indexing so instead of maintaining two indexes we are going to maintain a series of indexes right potentially more than two and the way we will we will maintain the size of these indexes so these indexes are not going to be of the same size they will be of different sizes and think of these indexes as corresponding to the bits of a binary number right so there there is this least significant bit the next most significant bit the next most significant bit and this is the most significant bit so think of putting an index here 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 so basically this series of indexes will correspond to positions of bits in a binary number in the binary representation of a number so this index is going to be of the smallest size this index is going to be of size twice that of this index this index is going to be of size twice that of this index this index is going to be of size twice that of this index and so on right so just like in a binary uh, like if you have a binary number like 1 1 1 1 1 this bit contributes twice as much to the overall sum value of this number than this bit this bit contributes twice uh, as much to the value as this bit and so on now just as some of the bits in a binary number can be 0 or 1 in a similar way not all of these indexes will exist at the same time right at any time just as some of the powers of 2 may be instantiated in a, in the similar way some of these indexes may actually exist and others may not exist and the way we will start out is by having an index which i am calling as z0 which is small enough that it fits into main memory right so right at the very beginning when the internet had just a few thousand or a few million documents you know this would have been the index it would have been small enough that you could store it in memory on a single machine now at some stage this index becomes too large because new documents keep appearing and at that stage you will you will check you will check if there is an existing index on the disk there is actually no existing index on disk if you just start out with this index so if this index becomes too big you you'll just write it to the disk and you'll write it you'll call this index as i sub 0 so this index will be analogous to the least significant bit of this number of a binary number and in this case this binary number is just the number 1 now once i store z0 on disk as i0 i will again start building a z0 as new documents start appearing at some stage this z0 will again become too big now instead of writing that z0 on disk at that stage as i0 i will note that i already have an i0 on disk so i will merge this z0 with this i0 index and that will create an i1 index okay so both z0 and i0 merge to form the i1 index and so i0 goes z0 also goes and we are left with this i1 index on this then as new documents start appearing i'll again build a z0 index in memory at some stage that z0 index will become large and at that stage i will store it on disk as i0 noting that i0 does not exist then i again start building the z0 index at some stage it will become large at that stage i will note that i already have an i0 index on disk so i will merge the z0 with the i0 
right? And that's and that will create an I1 index. Now instead of writing this I1 index on disk now, I'll note that there is already an I1 index on this. So I'll merge these two I1 indices and create an I2 index and store that one on disk. So note that we started out with an I0 index. Uh, we started out with no index on disk. We started out with just C0, right? So that's analogous to the number zero. Then we created an I0 index on disk. That's analogous to the number one. Then we created an I1 index on disk in the next stage, right? So this is after one merge of Z0. This is after another merge of Z0. Then after another merge of Z0, we get both I1 and I0 on disk. Then after another merge with the Z0 index, we get I2 on disk. No I1, no I0. Okay, there was no I2 here. No I2 and no I0 here. And no I2 and no I1 here. So notice that what we are doing is we are counting up binary numbers by creating these indexes in this particular way. So at any stage, note that we could potentially have more than two indices, right? Because once we count up to seven, for example, we'll have an I2, we'll have an I1, and we'll also have an I0. But at any time, only some of these are going to exist. And note that when we decide to merge two indices, they're always of the same size. So the merge index that is created is twice the size as those two individual indices. And that's how we maintain this property that each index is twice as large as the previous one. By the previous one, I mean uh, the index at the next lower significant bit. The size of the index at the next lower significant bit. So the pseudocode for logarithmic merge is given in your book. Right, so basically every time you add a new token to your index Z0, you just check if the size of your index has become large enough. And if it has become large enough, then you do this logarithmic merge. Right, that is, uh, you just start looking at those bit positions from the least significant bit onwards and check if I sub I exists. Right. First you check if I sub 0 exists. If it exists, then you merge Z0 with I sub 0 and create Z1. And then you check whether I1 exists or not. If it does exist, then you merge Z1 with I1 and then you create Z2. Then you check whether I2 exists or not. If I2 does not exist, you just store Z2 as I2. Otherwise you merge Z2 with I2 and you create I, uh, you know, Z3. <laughs> and so on. Yeah, compared to the, uh, so firstly I asked a question, how would you answer a query on this uh, index? Well, basically you will submit this query to every index that exists, right? So if there are five I indexes existing and one Z0 index in memory, you will submit your query to all six indexes and then you'll merge the results for all, from, from all six of them. Right, you'll take an OR for uh, uh, to generate the results. So let's say the number of tokens in your um, corpus is T. Okay, so T is the number of tokens in the corpus. What would be the number of indexes in the log, you know, in under the scheme? The number of indexes under the scheme would be like the number of binary positions in the binary representation of some number. 
and in this case that number is approximately t you can say right so there are t postings think of so if there are t tokens in your corpus there will be the total number of postings in the postings list of your index will be t so in the binary representation of t how many bits are there that will be approximately how many indexes you will have under this scheme right so if you have t tokens in the corpus you will have approximately uh, or or at most log t indexes instead of just two indexes if you have, when you had a main and an auxiliary index that naive approach we, we we discussed before this instead of two the number of indexes are now proportional to log log of the total number of tokens in the corpus is this clear i mean i haven't given a completely rigorous argument for why this is the case but just an intuitive uh understanding of why the number of indexes will be at most log of t so let's say that the size of your z0 index is has to be less than or equal to n so again n here is the number of the maximum number of postings that can accumulate in the z0 index before you decide that it's large enough Okay, so as soon as the number of tokens hits n, you decide that this index is large enough. It's time to do some merge operations. So this means that the size of your i zero index will be less than or equal to n. The size of your i one index will be less than or equal to twice of n. Size of your i two index will be less than or equal to twice of 2n which is 2 square n so what's the uh total number of so let's say we go up to ik the k uh, i sub k will have a size of at most 2 to the power k times n so you can see that the size of the the, the number of postings is exponentially increasing Okay, it's increasing by a factor of two in every index. And what's the sum of the postings? So, of course, some of these may exist, some of these may not exist. Right? Some of these indexes will exist, some of these will not exist. But the point is that the number of uh, the total number of postings here is what we are calling as t. Right? So, the sum of the sizes of all these indexes is equal to t so can you see why the number of indexes here will be at most log t right so in other words k will be approximately log t again we can assume we are talking about logarithm base 2 why is this true what is 2 to the power k 2 to the power k is 2 to the power log base 2 of t which is t right if k is approximately log of t when k is approximately log of t 2 to the power k is approximately is approximately equal to t and 2 to the power k times n is the size of oops two to the power k times n is approximately the size of i sub k and if the sum of these has to be less than or equal to t then it's clear that this must be less than or equal to t right this is the highest index that exists in this uh, scheme when there are t tokens okay now these may or may not exist these intermediate ones but this one must exist right that is why 
I'm stopping this series at I sub K because I'm saying that this is the largest index under this scheme that actually exists. And this largest index should have a size of 2 to the power K times N. And if the sum of all these sizes is T, then this must be less than or equal to T. Right? That means 2 to the power K must be less than or equal to T by N. And taking the log of both sides, K must be less than or equal to log of T by N. And assuming N is more than 1, right? After all, uh, N is the number of tokens at which we decide that our index is large enough. And that's definitely going to be much greater than 1. So we can say that this is less than or equal to log base 2 of T. Because T by N is less than T. So if I replace T by N with T, I'm getting something larger over here. So K is less than or equal to log base 2 of T, which is why I'm saying that there will be at most log base to uh, at most log of t indexes i'm assuming here that you're familiar with this big o notation that's usually done in an algorithm course okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to leave you with an exercise uh try to argue why this scheme is more efficient in, uh, if, if you look at the time complexity of construction of an index, try to argue why the logarithmic merge is more efficient than the earlier scheme we discussed, auxiliary and main index, using, you know, uh, these kind of notations.